final notice to Lara Croft, a current tenant of premises. This is to serve as your final notice for the purposes of terminating your ownership of Croft Manor. You are required to immediately vacate and surrender possession of said manor to Atlas de Mornay, executor of estates. Lara, it is unfortunate that you have forced my hand in this matter, but so be it. As you know, your parents appointed me executor of the estate in the event of their absence. Since your mother disappeared, her death was never technically declared. And given the circumstances surrounding your father's death, it's no surprise that he never drafted a formal last will and testament to account for this circumstance. Unfortunately, you have no legal claims to the estate. I'm willing to negotiate a modest monthly stipend from your trust, but only if you leave the manor by week's end. Don't fight me on this, Lara. Your mother wouldn't want that. Sincerely, Atlas. There has to be a will or some kind of evidence of what happened to Mum in the manor somewhere. Dad's safe. Hmm. Needs a combination. It's got to be in Dad's papers somewhere. Maybe in the library. My birthday crown. Hmm. <laughs> I was so proud of that thing. <laughs> That's my handwriting. My penmanship was pretty good. Dad would have liked me to go to Oxford, but I insisted on UCL. <laughs> yep, looks real. Roth once offered to forge me a fake diploma to show Dad. Well, this is a hell of a thing. I met someone tonight quite unexpectedly. But it shouldn't have been, it seems. I've been so buried in my work, so distracted by my latest revelations, I never bothered to notice my surroundings. But there she was, sitting at my table in the library. Her name is Amelia. And apparently she's been studying right next to me. Art history, of all things. I shared some of my research against my better judgment, but I wanted to see how she would respond. And she did not disappoint. I felt as if I was suddenly engaged in a mental game of chess, moving and counter-moving in argument. At one point, that poor old librarian had to shush us as if we were children. I feel so foolish for not having noticed her earlier. She's a brilliant woman who's challenged my ideas for the first time in memory. In truth, I don't know if she's feeling as exhilarated as I am right now, but I dare say our conversation was mutually stimulating. For the first time in a long time, I find myself thinking about something else besides my research. I hope she returns for another round tomorrow. My parents made a good team, challenging each other from the start. Dad's map of the forgotten cities of northern Syria. He was closer than he knew to finding the Prophet's tomb. Dad's book about immortality myths might be useful in my research. I finally introduced Richard to the family. It went precisely how I imagined. I see but polite grace from mother, indifference and disinterest from father, and thinly veiled contempt from Atlas. Of course they don't approve. To them, Lord Croft is the man who took away their beloved daughter and ruined her long-standing engagement, though I was never going to marry that repugnant Earl of Farringdon anyway. One might think they would be happy that I was being courted by a genuine lord of the realm. It just happens to be Richard Croft. In their eyes, the man who single-handedly ruined a once great family. But there's nothing to be done now. Watching how Richard dealt with their subtle insults and disrespect. 
such grace and calm. I know he did it for me. I think I'm falling in love with this man. It will break my mother's heart, but I cannot live the life she imagined for me. My time with Richard has only made this clearer. It must have been hard for Mum to go against her family's wishes. I'm glad she did. One of Dad's Yoruba masks. A gift from a friend he met on an expedition in Nigeria. This is probably my grandfather, Benjamin. A picture with Dad and Anna. Never liked wearing dresses, but the color was nice. The door to the library. Locked. Hmm. There's got to be another way through. Dad's artifacts from the Nile Valley. I always love looking at these. Dad became interested in immortality myths after his expeditions to Egypt. <laughs> this is the map I made for my first expedition with Dad. It shows a path to the library through the servants' passages. Too dark. Going to need a flashlight. Hi, Dad. I've been thinking about Mum lately. I wish I knew more about her. How did you meet? What was she like? Winston told me that she was a brilliant artist. Are some of her paintings locked up in the West Wing? And I guess I just want to know, did she love me, Dad? Did she ever say that she did? Maybe I'm just being silly, but will you tell me more about her the next time I'm home from school? The Grand Hall. Always loved playing in here as a kid. This will be one of the first things to fix. Lara, you know the West Wing is off limits. I'm sorry, I, I just wanted to see. We've been through this. Was Mum's room in here? Just stay out of there, darling. Dad was always so protective of the West Wing. Locked. Need a key to open this. This belongs to Anna. Most of her belongings are in the guest house. What was she doing in here? <laughs> Someone has a sense of humor. A phoenix figurine. I bet this appealed to Dad's idea of immortality, of rising from the ashes and being born anew. Lara, 
Since your return from your expedition to Yamatai, I've grown increasingly alarmed at your erratic behavior. I can only assume you suffered some kind of psychological trauma and are only acting out as a call for help. I want you to know that I hear you, loud and clear. Anna and I agree that it's time for you to be evaluated by a professional. I took the liberty of arranging an introduction to a highly qualified colleague of mine. You should be receiving the details in the post soon. I want to impress upon you the importance of this, Lara. As executor of the estate, it is my duty to see that it is left in capable hands. And if I may be blunt, you're acting like your father when he was at his worst. He nearly lost the manor himself in those days. I'd hate for you to repeat his mistakes. I encourage you to embrace the help I'm offering. Sincerely, your uncle. Got to remember to pack this for my next trip. Should be able to explore the dark now. Hey Jonah, sorry for not getting back to you sooner. I've decided to do some research at the manor. A lot has happened and I need some time to think about what I want to do next. This old place is filled with memories and secrets. Uncle Atlas has tried to keep me out of here for so long I don't even know if I want to keep it. But after everything that's happened, maybe I can find out what it still means to me. If it's worth fighting him for, I'll let you know how things worked out when I'm back in London. I really need to brush up on my ancestors one of these days. Amelia, the news has reached Mother. She knows that you broke off your engagement with the Earl of Farringdon. She is beside herself with worry. But, for the moment, she's controlling the narrative. As far as anyone knows, you're just having innocent second thoughts. But the moment your affair with Lord Croft goes public, it will be too late. Our name will be as ruined as this man you've chosen to bed. Don't you see that you're being selfish, Amelia? Please, consider your family. You're a de Mornay. Everything you do has a greater effect on us all. I'm coming down to London soon. Don't do anything rash until we have a chance to talk. <sighs> Falling apart. Maybe I should just let my uncle have this place. They say a good test of a relationship is how well you travel together. Well, I'd say Amelia and I have passed that test with flying colors. Indeed, these last few months in Egypt have been nothing short of extraordinary. She and Roth get on like old uni chums. In fact, the two have spent more than a few nights drinking and playing cards into the wee hours. Despite her decidedly proper upbringing, Amelia's taken to roughing it more than I ever have. She fits in and connects with the local populace with such amazing empathy. Because of her, I've had a bit of an unexpected breakthrough in my research. She managed to convince an artifact dealer in Old Town to sell me a magnificent and quite unusual Tibetan scroll. From what I can tell, it seems to contain details surrounding an immortality ritual of some sort. I think it's time for me to take the next step with Amelia. In fact, I don't think I can wait any longer. I will ask for her hand tomorrow in the bright Egyptian sun amidst the dust and ruins. I'm not surprised he asked her to marry him as soon as he got the idea.
Amelia, I know we have had our differences in recent years. I've tried my best to keep an open mind about your relationship with Richard, but I just can't let you go on this ill-conceived expedition without saying my piece. You say Richard's theories have merit. You say that he may have actually stumbled upon some mythic, unknown truth, but I have seen nothing to support such claims. And while your word may have been enough in times past, I cannot let you squander away what remains of your name and reputation and that of our family, truth be told, on some damned foolish crusade. I intend to go to Richard's investors and let them know exactly how he's spending their money, but I want to give you a chance to put a stop to this yourself. Please, don't go to Tibet. If not for me, at least for Lara. Still just as creepy as I remember. My lord, I hope this missive finds you on a successful expedition and in good health. Before I bore you with estate affairs, I wanted to let you know that our little angel has been into some mischief. As always, I indulged her in our usual game of chess. Over the course of the game, she broached the subject of her mother. She's having trouble remembering her now, and wanted to enter her ladyship's atelier, which you sealed off, to play on her mother's piano. It enraged her when she wasn't allowed to go in, of course. For someone so young, she has such strong emotions. Later in the day, she set a trap for me in the walk-in freezer of all places. Before I knew what was happening, I found myself locked inside. Mrs. Sheffield discovered me an hour later, shivering and somewhat peeved. It took us an additional hour to find Lara in the grounds. I know all her hiding places, of course, but this time she really did not want to be found. Call it years of observation, but I can tell when she's out of sorts. My lord, if I may be so bold, she misses you fiercely. She is lonely for her father. Please consider a call as soon as you are able. Poor Winston. I remember being so angry. He was always so patient with me. King to Queen One. I'm going to win this time, Winston. <laughs> Clever girl. But you should know by now, winning isn't everything. Queen to King's Bishop Six. Check. Everything is almost ready for Mistress Lara's birthday expedition surprise. It's been a bit of an all-hands-on-deck effort organizing the affair and keeping it secret. She's obsessed with Egypt, memorizing hieroglyphs and ancient Egyptian districts, so she'll be delighted with what Lord Croft has come up with. This will be good for her. She's been acting up of late, but I know she's just craving more of her father's attention. He's been so buried in his research. It'll be a nice moment for the two of them to reconnect. And I do believe he needs it as much as she does. I'm at a crossroads now. Good lord, that's such a cliché. But there's truth in it. Two roads before me. Both present joy and compromise. A life with Richard. Adventure, intellectual pursuit, perhaps a new family. But also a man obsessed with something I cannot understand. Or a life of obligation. Upholding the de Mornay name, embracing our traditions, not losing the family that raised me. Oh, this really is a rubbish choice. 
I don't want to lose them, but I love the life I've started to build with Richard. He comes with his own difficulties, but I can accept them. Will it be enough? Easy for you to say. You always win. Knight takes queen. What I mean to say is try to enjoy the journey, Lara. Don't rush to victory. Bishop to King Seven. I know, Winston. I just want... Oh no! I didn't even see that! You should also know by now, I'm not to be trifled with on this board, young lady. Mate. Oh, I am going to win. Someday. I would play chess with our old butler, Winston, on this board. Never could beat him. I always chose white. Maybe if I let him go first once in a while, I might have won. loved a good bottle of wine. Hmm. I can still smell his favorite Bordeaux. Dad, this is it! The basement of despair! Indeed, Lara. Muster your courage, for this is the only path to the Library of Infinite Knowledge. Look there! See the string? An ancient Egyptian tripwire. The Keepers of Knowledge want none to disturb their treasures. We must tread carefully. Let me lead. I know how to spot all the traps. I'm sure you do, my darling. Lead on! damage from the main hall above. One of the wire traps Winston made for my birthday expedition. My stuffed bear. I couldn't have a tomb without a mummy. This bust of Anubis was from Dad's Egyptian collection. He must have put it down in the basement for our little expedition. Plan 
plans for adding electricity to the manor. Dad used to say his granny hated all the bright lights. Hmm, there's a missing page. Amelia left tonight. She packed her suitcase and walked right out of here and I didn't even notice. Like those days in the Oxford Library before we even met, I just had my nose in a book lost in my own world. I am such a fool. I have let my obsession with this damned ritual of long life rule my better judgment for far too long, and it may already be too late. How could I have not seen this coming? I've made this mistake over and over, always putting my research before my personal life. But it's never hurt like this before. I simply cannot live without her. If I have to give up this accursed quest that has plagued me for so long, then so be it. I am going after her, right now, tonight. Okay. Dad's ledger has to be in here somewhere. Hopefully it has the combination to the safe. I've created a clever little map for Lara's birthday expedition. I used the invisible ink Amelia picked up for me in Morocco so many years ago. At the time, I remember being so annoyed by that rather aggressive street vendor. But she just smiled in her sunny way and paid him without a second thought. I assumed it was just a tourist scam, but it actually works. Turns out it requires a very specific kind of vellum and a heat source to illuminate the ink after it's dried. It should prove a nice challenge for Lara to puzzle out. Remember this now. Each district in ancient Egypt had a symbol and a number. I always preferred these symbols to the actual number hieroglyphs. Now, let me see, let me see. These two myths are referencing the same source material. But where did I see this image? Dad, I think it's this one. In the chapter on Egyptian districts. Why, yes, I think you're right, Lara. I remember the page, with the illustration of Ra. I've reached the monastery. As Roth predicted, it was hidden deep in the Himalayas. And now that I'm standing on these high stone walls, I am overwhelmed by the sheer beauty of the mountains that surround me. It is simply breathtaking. But what adds to their spiritual majesty is the truth of this place. The monks welcomed me, as is their way, but they seemed to expect me. They must have known someone like me would eventually come seeking answers. I know this is the place. They've conducted the ritual before. I have seen the evidence, the distinctive symbols carved into the floors, the art displayed on the inner chamber's walls. They've created the elixir before, and they will again if I can convince them. I sent Amelia a message straight away. I want her by my side for this discovery. Hmm, Dad was looking for an elixir. Was it the elixir of life? For God's sake, memorize the combination, you fool. Lara's expedition treasure. My favorite painting by Amelia. The day of our wedding anniversary. Okay, got to find those objects to figure out the combination to the safe. There's something else here. Dad's lighter. I don't remember him ever using it, though. The Croft family crest and initials. B.C. I wonder if this belonged to my grandfather. Okay, should be able to light the fireplace now. Don't 
took quite a tumble off of this old thing when I was a girl. Still feel it in the shoulder from time to time. image of a key. I remember this map now. It leads to the master key, but we made it with a special kind of invisible ink. It could only be seen with the heat of a fire. one of Winston's master keys in here when I was a kid. It appears Sir Reginald's helmet fell off. Or didn't I put it back properly? My goodness, you've been paying attention, haven't you? This could be an important breakthrough. Does this mean I'm your research assistant? That and more, my darling girl. Takes me back. Those were good times. The best times. This picture was taken in the library. Eighteen twenty additions to the main hall in progress. Hmm. I can see the map. Looks like the key is hidden under a trunk near the bookcase. X marks the spot, as they say. Master key. This should get me into the West Wing. All right. This should open most rooms in the manor, including the Forbidden West Wing. crown from my birthday treasure hunt. How old was I again? Six? Eight? Hmm. I think this hieroglyph corresponds to a number, but which one? Oh, 
Okay, Dad's clues mention Mum's paintings and their anniversary. Hopefully I can find some answers in the West Wing. Family crest. My lord, we all hope your work was well received at the conference and look forward to your return. As is so often the case with these missives, I wanted to call your attention to an incident involving our little angel. It seems that Lara has been the subject of some ridicule amongst the other girls at school. From what I can gather, some of the other young ladies were teasing her for being too much of a tomboy. You know how Lara can get when pushed into a corner. Let's just say they won't be bothering her again. But I do think their words have had an effect. I believe Lara has been missing her mother lately. She's begun to worry that she isn't like the other girls. And having grown up with only a father, it shouldn't come as a surprise that she has trouble relating to them. I wonder if this new friend of yours, Anna, is it? Perhaps she might prove a welcome influence. It might be worth bringing her to the manor to meet Lara. In any case, I'll let you decide the proper time to do that. Please travel home safely. Yours, Winston. Mum's atelier. Dad sealed it soon after she died. He probably couldn't bear the idea of removing any of her belongings. Untouched for years, exactly as she left it. There has to be something in Mum's atelier that I missed. I believe it took this trip to push me over the edge. I've been able to see Richard in his element, seeing him at his best and his worst. I've experienced the purity and chaos of his passion, and I came to realize I want his passion in my life every day. <laughs> so it's done. Richard wanted to wait another four days until my birthday, but I wouldn't have it. Once I make a decision, I prefer to get on with it, so we found a small chapel in Luxor that was just right. And with Roth and the others at our side, we married as the sun set over this remarkable land. Mother will never forgive me. Atlas will forever resent me. But I don't care anymore. I'm free of de Mornay obligations, free to pursue my own passions and live my life surrounded by those who will encourage and challenge me. I'm excited for the future, whatever it may bring. Tomorrow, Richard and I return home to London as the Crofts, forging our path together. Mum's wedding ring. I always wondered what happened to it. The inscription is faded.
I am bursting with pride. Amelia is with child. It is amazing how everything in life can change with such a simple event. Obviously, we don't know the gender, but already we've discussed possible names. Perhaps Benjamin, after my grandfather, or maybe Griffin. He was more infamous a croft than even me. No, Amelia wouldn't have it. Besides, she's certain it's a girl. She favours a, a classic such as Scarlet or Kate, though I've made some headway with Lara. A subtle nod to the sun god Ra, and our days in Egypt, where certainly this child was conceived. I find myself thinking about this new life we've created, of how much she might be like us. For all my research into myths of immortality, I may have ignored the most obvious answer to the questions that plague me. We live on through our progeny, our genes, DNA, experiences passed through the generations. Perhaps this is the simple truth of eternal life, and I've just been too stubborn to accept it. Dad may have discovered the secret to immortality without even knowing it. Amelia would not have approved. That alone should have been the end of it. But I am, as God made me, a stubborn fool. I locked all the West Wing's doors, and I shall not open them again until either my life or my obstinacy comes to an end. The night before, Roth told me I would someday change my mind. Like a broken arm cast in plaster, he said. The wound would heal, and we would someday shed the bandages to be whole again. The metaphor made me furious. The clumsy way he cast our loss off as nothing more than an inconvenience. There is wisdom in his rough words, but I've done what I must. Perhaps one day, Lara will throw back the doors to let the sun shine in again. Maybe she will find her own sense of peace in this place. At least that old thing still works. My mother's perfume, the smell, so familiar, I can almost remember her. <laughs> Mum, on her wedding day, she looks so beautiful. There's a date, October something, damn, the number is faded. Their anniversary was in October, but which day? Oh, I can't believe I don't know this. There's got to be another clue somewhere. I remember this. Dad gave it to Mum on her birthday. October 13th, Mum's birthday. Hmm, pretty sure my parents were married in October. I I think it was close to her birthday. This is Dad. I suppose it's a family tradition, but I can't imagine having one of these made of me. After everything Atlas has done, how could you tell him about the expedition? It's just all been too much. I needed to talk to someone. He's still my brother. I don't trust him. You don't have to, Richard. But please, trust me. I'm sorry, my dear, but I know him. He'll take it to the papers. The investors will pull out. Then go. Without me. Tonight. I will take care of Atlas. And then meet you in Tibet next week. I was so young, but I still remember that terrible argument. It wasn't always an easy road for my parents. I think this was Dad's pocket watch. Hmm, looks like it stopped precisely at midnight.
With Amelia gone, the manor is a different place. A dimness pervades, a quiet I can't stand. Even though Lara is too young to understand what has happened, she also senses the change. She's asked after her mother only once, and I'm afraid my reaction must have terrified her. I will need Winston more than ever these next few months to help look after her. I never quite realized how much grief can consume a man, but I am utterly consumed. I know I can't escape the pain, but I will try my damnedest to avoid it. I will seal the West Wing for as long as I live in this place. It will remain exactly as Amelia left it. Perhaps someday Lara can find her own answers there. I stood up to my family's criticism, stood in defense of Richard and our love. But as my new life began in Croft Manor, doubt set in. How could love flourish in these cavernous halls and endless passageways? Had I made a terrible mistake? I have never been more delighted to be wrong. Richard welcomed me to the manor, my new home, with a game. It was a clue written in jumbled words from five different languages, but it pointed the way forward. The next clue was a seemingly blank piece of parchment in the kitchen, where the heat of a candle revealed a message written in lemon juice. I followed each step, grinning like a child as I solved his riddles and chased the trail to its end. A white cloth stretched out on the lawn where a picnic was laid out. <laughs> we laughed and ate, and my doubt vanished with the last of the morning mist. Love can and will endure. You've almost got it, darling. Here, let me show you. Like this, see? <laughs> well done, Lara. Well done. I wonder how my life would have been different had she lived. Mum's paintings. Which one was Dad's favorite? I returned home this afternoon to collect the last of my paintings. I suppose I should say I returned to my family's home. Atlas was there, in one of his foul moods. And even as he dripped venom for Richard with his cruel barbs, I could only laugh. To think that I once listened to my bitter brother in matters of my own happiness. My dismissal only served to infuriate him more. I left him there in father's study, muttering to himself. On the drive back, as Winston took a longer route through the country, I looked through my paintings. Richard's favourite one among them. A simple abstract with blocks of red. I smiled, thinking about giving it to him. I was happy. And... I was going home. Okay, back to the study to open that safe. I don't have any memory of this. I wish I could remember doing this. Mum died too young. Mum with me as a baby. I've never seen this. Hard to believe I was ever that small. I'm glad I still have so much of Mum's work.
Dad, what do you keep in there? Nothing too important, Lara. Estate business and such. If it's not important, then why bother putting it in a safe? I should know better than to try and pull one over on you. <laughs> there is something important in here. And it's for you, should you need it someday. Well, let's hope you came through for me, Dad. <laughs> <laughs>